Hello everyone, I'm Diane Hoffman. And I'm Caroline Sweeney. You're watching Off the Presses, the weekly show that recaps the biggest news around the Tri-County area and previews articles to come straight off the pages of the Pottstown Mercury. A Lower Pottsgrove man died of natural causes Monday afternoon while driving on North Kime Street near Bukert Road. 67-year-old Gary Morris of Pottstown suffered from an unspecified medical issue around 3.45 p.m. In the 1400 block of North Kime Street, the car Morris was driving went through several lawns, hitting a fence, two mailboxes, and a ditch before getting back onto the road near 1391 North Kime Street. The car came to a stop against a house at 1350 North Kime Street, according to police. Morris's wife, who was the passenger in the car, was uninjured. One person and a dog are safe after a fire destroyed a trailer at 165 Bridge Pike Wednesday morning. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, but authorities on the scene said the fire may have started in the heater room. Around 10.38 a.m., fire crews and police arrived at Unit 142 of Ridgeview Trailer Park. Firefighters were able to extinguish the flame in 20 minutes, but the trailer was a total loss. A borough man is facing attempted involuntary manslaughter charges after allegedly shaking his three-month-old daughter so hard she needed to be placed on a ventilator at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. 20-year-old Kenneth Conley was at home alone with the infant when the incident occurred. According to police, Conley allegedly became enraged, then violently shook the baby three to five times. The infant cried, then went limp. In an interview with police almost a week after the incident, Conley allegedly admitted to lying to doctors at both CHOP and the Pottstown Memorial Medical Center. His bail was set at $200,000, and he is expected in the courtroom of District Judge Edward C. Crop Sr., on April 2nd at 11 a.m. Due to patient confidentiality, CHOP could not comment on the infant's condition, but the investigating officer said she is still alive. After an 11-month investigation, police have charged two people in connection with a string of burglaries that stretched across two states and totaled more than $160,000 in losses. 34-year-old Eric Adkins and 36-year-old Alma Colon Perez were connected with burglaries in Berks, Chester, and Montgomery counties. According to the Limerick Police Department, a township resident helped propel the investigation by getting photos of Adkins and the car he was driving when the resident witnessed a burglary in progress in April of 2013. In all the burglaries, Adkins and Cologne Perez would take a pillowcase from one or more of the bedrooms and use them to carry the stolen items from the houses. According to police, the pair stole $168,000 worth of items. Montgomery County Assistant District Attorney Gabriel McGee said the investigation was a combination of traditional police work and utilizing new technology. Cologne Perez posted 10% of her $25,000 bail, according to court documents. Adkins is in jail in New Jersey and is awaiting extradition. We'll be right back. Take advantage of gold's record prices and bring your scrap gold to Douglas Diamonds at our Pottstown store for cash now. 1300 North Charlotte Street in Pottstown. Call 484-941-6453 or visit our website at www.douglasdiamondscorp.com. Looking for a flexible job? Need to make your own schedule? Chestnut Knoll at Home is seeking reliable, mature individuals for at-home caregiver positions. At-home caregivers are responsible for providing assistance to individuals in their homes. It's that time of year again to show readers how much you love your canine companion. The 2014 Top Dog Competition is underway. We finished the first round of submissions, but there's still time to vote for who you think should be Top Dog. The semi-finalist ballot will include 50 dogs that will be printed in the April 3rd edition of the Mercury. 
The 2013 Top Dog Contest raised $3,399 for the American Cancer Society. Pre-registration has already started for this year's Bark for Life. For information, head to facebook.com slash BFLPottstown. A lower Pottsgrove man, 44-year-old bartender Kurt Buchler, was honored for his heroic efforts last March to save a 19-year-old woman from an attack by three dogs with a Carnegie Hero Medal. According to the story by the Associated Press, Buchler wound up being hospitalized for six days and missed three months of work after he helped Caitlin Fadley of Rotosburg. Fadley was attacked by three dogs. Buchler tried to distract the dogs and ran a short distance to direct their attention to him. He was successful, but they caught up to him and began to attack him. Buchler is one of 22 people who were honored that day with medals and cash awards from the Carnegie Hero Commission. Last Friday night was the 15th annual Valley Jazz Festival at Perkiom and Valley Middle School West. Here's a sampling of some talent at the show. Off the Presses will continue after this short break. School board, and in order to sort everything out, Caroline sat down with reporter Evan Brandt. How does the breakfast and lunch service work now at um, the Pottstown School District? Well, currently um, about 63% of the students are on what's called the Federal Free and Reduced Lunch Program, which is uh, also a measure of poverty in the area. Uh, those who don't qualify for that program, which is usually through uh, food stamps or some other federal program, they buy their own lunches. Okay. Um, approximately how much does each meal cost? Well, an elementary meal costs about $2.10 to make. A secondary meal costs about $2.35. That's what it costs the students. It actually costs the district about $2.95 to produce each meal. Um, with this free meal service, when uh, should parents expect to see this program begin? Uh, the program won't begin until next school year. So in September, it should be up and running. Uh, will this cause a tax increase? Um, no, this is not locally funded in any way. This is uh, a, a federal program. It's also part of the, uh, let me see if I can get this acronym right, the uh, Healthy Hunger Free Kids Campaign. Um, it's part of uh, the First Lady's Anti-Obesity Program. There are also a lot of new nutritional requirements that go along with the program. Do you know how old the stadium lights at Pottstown High School are? Uh, I wish I did, and I haven't met anyone who does know how old they are. I do know that they are decades old. Um, and are you able to tell us why it's been so long um, to have their condition addressed? Um, well, there has been a long debate since 2012, in fact, about whether or not to try to recondition them or to replace them completely. Um, the uh, issue went on so long that uh, the choice was taken away from the board, and they had to come down for safety reasons. The wooden poles are no longer considered structurally strong enough to hold the lights up and the lights are themselves decades old. Um, does the school board have a plan for the money that um, they will save by taking down the lights? Uh, it isn't really a money issue. The money that they'll save is by not using taxpayer money to put new ones back up. Uh, they're requiring or rather asking that the community um, try and raise the money independently in order to pay for it because they don't want to take away from educational programs in order to pay for new lights. Has the school board started thinking about a contingency plan for outdoor sports? It's my understanding that the athletic director has already notified all the other Pac-10 teams that there's a pretty good possibility that, at least in terms of football, that their games will have to be played on Saturday. But Jeff Sparagana, the superintendent, told the school board recently that he left it open-ended. So if the community is successful in raising the money and getting the lights up soon enough, the Friday night schedule can also be implemented. A three-second video showing a Pottsgrove High School junior slapping a special needs freshman on a school bus two weeks ago has gone viral and forced the district to reinvestigate the incident in an effort to address the fervor it is creating. Superintendent Shelley Fiola issued a release indicating the incident happened on March 12th, and she confirmed Tuesday afternoon that the disciplinary actions had been taken by Vice Principal Jeffrey Madden following the incident. However, the matter was reopened when the video went viral on the internet. Michael Wagman, the district's director of technology and communications, indicated that both students involved were male, and Fiola said the junior is 17 years old and the freshman is 16. 
But in a demonstration of the reach and impact of social media, Wagman said once the video went viral, the administration decided to reinvestigate the matter. Because the matter involves the disciplining of a student, federal law prohibits the district from releasing either the full 15-minute video taken by the camera on the bus or release details about what its reinvestigation may uncover. Since the video went viral, Fiola said she's heard from the parents of both students involved and, quote, the parents of both students are outraged by this as well. At a school board meeting Tuesday night, Fiola said parents must be proactive and contact the district if they feel their child is being bullied and if they don't feel the district has responded appropriately. Improve your outdoor living space. Easy as one, two, three. Do it all or in steps with our expandable system. Call Mac House Contracting at 610-530-8727. Hey, this is Austin Herzog, the Mercury Sports Editor, here to recap the weekend sports. Last Friday, the Spring Ford girls basketball team closed the winter season by playing in the PIAA Class 4A Girls Basketball Championship in Hershey. Daryl Grumling and I were on the scene. Hey, this is Austin Herzog with Daryl Grummel here at the Giant Center in Hershey for the PIAA Class 4A Championship, Spring Forward versus Cumberland Valley for the second straight year. Daryl, what do you think about this matchup? Well, obviously these two teams, Austin, are quite familiar with each other. They played in the regular season. Last game of the regular season, Spring Forward beat them 52-37. Spring Forward beat them in the state championship last year. Cumberland Valley looking for that revenge. Spring Forward led by the tandem of Seniors Sammy Stipp and Shelby Mueller trying to make it two in a row. Should be a good defensive struggle and uh, go down to the wire. Austin. Hey, this is Austin Herzog with Daryl Grumley here at halftime in Springfield Cumberland Valley PIAA Championship game. It's 23-14 Cumberland Valley after Taylor Snyder just hit a huge three from the wing. Daryl, what do you think of the first half? Austin Rams are in a little bit of trouble here. CV came to play. Uh, Kelly Jaycott, best player on the court right now. Nine points, uh, also eight points for uh, Snydman who with the big three, reminiscent of Maggie Lock last year. Rams have picked it up a little defensively. They got to pick it up on offense now, uh, but the time of need is coming in the second half. Hey everybody, Daryl Grumling from the Mercury coming to you from an empty or giant center in Hershey where the first day of the PIAA basketball championships have wrapped up. Unfortunately for the Springford girls basketball team, the Rams lost 49-30 to to Cumberland Valley in the Quad A girls championship. Hot shooting Cumberland Valley, sophomore Kelly Jacob shot. She had team high 16 points. Uh, Springford shot just 9 for 45. Sammy Stippa led the Rams with 11 points, finished her career with 1366 in her career, and what a great career it was. Uh, Springfield finishes 27 and 7, uh, Pac-10 champs for the third straight year, District 1 runners up. Moving on to spring sports, weather has wreaked havoc around the area and has influenced a lot of the preparation for the, win for the spring sports. But on Monday, there was a full slate of games, including baseball and softball. In baseball action, Boyertown came back on their final out against Upper Perkyoman and eventually went on to win in nine innings, five to two. Zach Moser had the game-tying RBI single in the seventh inning, which clinched the comeback, and then ultimately the Bears went on to move to 1-0 in the league. Also, in girls lacrosse action, Boyertown, the reigning, the 10-time reigning girls, Pac-10 girls lacrosse champions, defeated Owen J. Roberts in a rematch of last year's Pac-10 final. The Bears won 15-11, getting eight goals from Haley Wenzel. That's your recap in sports for Off the Presses. This is Austin Herzog. Don't wait any longer. Start saving money on your heating bill when you heat your entire home, water, and more with the safe, comfortable heat of a central boiler outdoor furnace. Call Keeler Service Center at 215-723-8445 or visit keelerservices.com. McConnell's Refrigeration has a huge inventory of refurbished refrigerators and restaurant equipment. Local delivery is $25. We service all makes and models. Call Rob at 610-469-6107. That does it for us this week. I'm Caroline Sweeney. And I'm Diane Hoffman. 
You can find the most up-to-date news, weather, sports, and entertainment at the Mercury's website, potsmerk.com. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is MercuryX, and you can find us on Facebook. We'll be here every week with the recap of the top stories and what you can expect coming up next off the presses. <laughs>